Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine was a game that arguably defined its franchise. Well, it's been 13 years and a sequel's out. So, was it worth the wait? Does it live up to its predecessor? I'm Mac, and I've got your back. Today on the Jetavision, we're reviewing Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2. Now, we don't like starting our reviews off negatively, but we're gonna have to. We ran into technical issues right as we first booted up the game. It took very long to load and would ultimately crash at the beginning of the first cutscene. See, we install the game on a hard drive, but for some reason, the game only works if it's on a solid state drive. So we had to spend an extra hour making space on our SSD and moving the game over to it. Now, sure, now that we've solved the problem, it's not that big of a deal, but we shouldn't have had to go through that process to the first place. And frankly, if someone wants to install a game on a hard drive, they should be able to install a game on a hard drive. There is literally no reason why this should be a problem. Adding to the frustration, for some reason, controllers don't work. You straight up cannot use them. Apparently, you have to do a bunch of things in the settings to make them function, but nothing works. Now, maybe we did something wrong, but honestly, it makes no difference. If we want to use a controller for a game, it should work as soon as it boots up. There should be no process to go through to make that happen because otherwise you have to play a hack and slash with a keyboard and mouse and that's just heretical man we're gonna talk about the story now if you have no idea what warhammer is good luck because you're on your own in warhammer 40,000 space marine 2 you once again play as titus having been accused of being tainted by chaos he voluntarily exiles himself to the death watch chapter being found innocent he is let back into the ultramarines although now demoted to lieutenant and well it's back into the action the tyranids a hive mind of insectoids who seek to devour the entire galaxy have invaded the system of Residius, putting a special project the Adeptus Mechanicus are behind, Project Aurora, at risk. What is Project Aurora? It doesn't matter. The point is, you gotta fight through these swarms of Tyranids to complete missions that will see the project safe and sound, so that one day it may serve the Imperium of Man. To accompany you are Sergeant Gadriel and Brother Chiron, transfers from the White Scars and Salamander chapters respectively. <laughs> Nah, I'm just being racist. Honestly, the main trio of characters were written very weakly. While we did enjoy the brief moments of banter and brotherhood, I'm honored to fight with Sergeant Rose. As are we, brother. You grew up on Kelf. And so we sent us all that dead today. Why, sir? Gadriel and Chiron just felt like generic space marines with nothing much to them. In fact, we actually found ourselves disliking them quite a bit throughout the story, as they constantly bemoan and bicker with Titus during the missions. It is the chaplain's responsibility to ensure our chapter remains pure, not yours. Your erratic behavior is plain for all to see. And now, I find you have a history of it. I am doing my duty. As I was then, protecting a system from ruin. It should be us facing the Hive Tyrant. Talasa can handle it. They have three men. We should be with them, but you have us playing courier. And do things that jeopardize the whole operation. And that's not to say that Titus himself is in the clear. Because he was also done pretty dirty. In the first game, he was cool, calm, straightforward, and level-headed. Here, he often comes off as frantic, annoyed, and dodgy. What was that between you and Luz? Irrelevant. I disagree. That is your right. Brother, we only want to help you. Help? You almost cost us the mission, and now you speak of help. Before, he'd acknowledge and respect guardsmen, but here he seems very dismissive of them. He tries to collect information behind the back of the Ultramarines chapter. Now, a good argument can be made as to why he is the way he is in this game. I mean, he literally got falsely accused of heresy by an ally after saving an entire planet from orcs and chaos. That would probably embitter some people. Now, the game doesn't give us any indication that that's what's going on, but we're being good faith here. But just because it makes sense doesn't mean we have to like it. We spent a whole game with Titus and they changed him. He changed, he regressed, and that sucks. The other side characters are eh. You had the captain with his cheesy Scottish accent. We're facing a Tyranid splinter fleet. They engaged us on two planets. You have an Imperial Guard commander with a funny German accent who completely disappears like a third of the way into the game. Move to defend our west flank and get those heavy boats resupplied! 
some Adeptus Mechanicus guys who also don't matter and they also disappear pretty much as soon as you meet them. It's also worth noting that the way the story is conveyed is much different from the first game. In the first game, you were on planet Gryah from beginning to end, making the game feel like one giant mission, one giant operation. Here, you're constantly bouncing back from planet to ship to get briefed on your new assignments, essentially breaking up the campaign into smaller segments, which just makes everything feel smaller and less grand. So yeah, the story was pretty weak. Sure, its predecessor wasn't much to write home about either, but it provided enough justification for the gameplay. With the story so diminished, the gameplay just felt like tearing through enemies just for the sake of tearing through enemies. Moving on to something a bit more positive, the graphics. A huge step up, to be sure, although 13 years between releases will do that, I guess. In Space Marine 1, the drab color palette led to environments kind of meshing with each other, providing quite an unmemorable world. That's not the case here. The game is much more colorful and goes for a more realistic look, and I'd say it gets it just fine. With the new and improved graphics, the world of Warhammer feels impeccably portrayed. You'll move through teeming jungles, fight through sprawling hive cities, ominous tomb worlds, and war zones feel like real war zones, with extensive battlements, lines of soldiers fighting tooth and nail, and tanks rolling out. All while hordes ravage the area, and these flying creatures blot the skies. This is Warhammer, baby, and we're all about it. Now that being said, Captain Titus looks pretty rough. It looks like he's a plastic surgery addict, and that funny German lady does not look much better. Now, moving on to gameplay, the spirit of Space Marine remains largely unchanged. It's a third-person shooter and hack and slash. It can be played single player, but you can also go online to play alongside other people. The levels are extremely linear, with detours every now and then to get supplies or collect audio logs that shed more light on everything going on in the story. Swarms of enemies dash at you, and you use a mix of ranged and melee combat to bring them down. Simple combos can also be executed to really wreak havoc, and killing enough of the opposition lets you trigger Righteous Fury, which increases your attack effectiveness. You have a health and armor bar. When the armor runs out, you lose health. When you run out of health, you get down, although you can get revived by a teammate. If you get down too many times, however, it's game over and you'll have to restart at a checkpoint. Special kill animations can be done to recover armor, however. A lot of stuff's been changed. For one, you're now invincible when doing a special kill animation, which takes away that risk-reward feeling from the first game. Although since you're fighting such a great number of enemies, it kind of makes sense. And like I said, special kill animations don't recover health, they only recover armor. You can only recover health via stims and righteous fury, which are few and far in between. This kind of sucks. Armor and health are very easily taken from the player. It turns the gameplay into a desperate battle to keep your armor topped off, which kind of takes away the whole feeling of being this super space soldier going down waves upon waves of enemies. Also new are these indicators. If a blue indicator comes over an enemy, that signals an attack that can be countered for a kill or an attack that can be parried, opening up stronger enemies for attack. Red indicators mean the attack cannot be parried and must be dodged, where indifferent to this addition. It feels like the game favors melee over ranged combat. There's plenty of both shooting and melee to be done, but it would seem as though most of your kills are scored through close combat. After all, enemies come at you in large swarms, so there's only so much you can kill at a distance before they close in. And when they do, you can execute some pretty whack combos to take out large swabs, more than you ever could with a bolter. And that's to say nothing of the higher tier enemies, which feel like bullet sponges soaking up what feels to be entire magazines. <laughs> Using guns oftentimes just isn't worth it. Speaking of the weapons, you have a few secondaries in melee, each with varying stats. But the primary weapons are really where the variety's at. Here's just a few of them. Bolt Rifle. Bolt Rifle with Underslung Grenade Launcher. Auto Bolt Rifle. Heavy Bolt Rifle. Stalker Bolt Rifle. Bolt Carbine. Marksman Bolt Carbine. Instigator Bolt Carbine. Most of the weapons you can choose from are just Bolter variants. And then you have variants of those Bolter variants. Now just to be clear, there are a few interesting weapons. Like plasma incinerators that can be used semi-auto or as a charged explosive weapon. Melted guns that can take out hordes and stronger enemies. Uh, pyre blasters are used in specific sections of the campaigns to clear out these rat-like creatures. A last fusil that can charge up for a powerful precise shot. But funnily enough, even those weapons have variants. I'm just saying, man, like, really? Do you really need these copy-paste guns with slightly tweaked stats? I mean, really. Really. Finally, gameplay just feels indicative of what we'd call modern slop. It's just these little things, you know, the HUD, the co-op gameplay, the revive system, attack indicators, uh, the constant take, hold, and defend objectives. Small things, but 
You see. And it's not that big of a deal, I suppose, but when a game seemingly adheres to a template, a rigid formula that you see a lot of games use, you kind of take notice, and it makes the game less unique. It takes away from its personality. Dude, I feel like I'm a wide connoisseur the way I'm talking about these games. Oh, yes, the game has a severe lack of texture. It really takes away from its personality. Overall, the gameplay is not much of an improvement. It's still decently fun, don't get us wrong. The feel of being a space Marine is still somewhat there. There's that feeling of weight, heft, and clunkiness as you walk and run, and the kick of the bolter is quite satisfying. And really, blasting away, hacking and slashing, doing combos through hordes of enemies as they explode into bloody, gory bits is always gonna be fun. There's even some really interesting segments of gameplay, like, like the flamethrower sections, jump pack sections, and parts where enemies swarm in at such large numbers that they pile up to scale walls. There's definitely a few memorable moments here and there, but again, at the the end of it all, it's just not as good as it can be. The length of the campaign is decent. Locking in at 8 hours, it provides adequate gameplay. But when you finish that, you have two additional modes, Operations and Eternal War. In the main campaign, Titus acts alongside other squads, who assist him by completing secondary objectives. And the Operations mode is kind of where you get to see things from their point of view. It's a neat way to add a sense of scale to the main campaign. It gives the player the feeling that these missions are so big that it requires these extra squads to get other stuff done. You're given six classes to play with, each with their own playstyles, but more on that later. Disappointingly, the actual gameplay of Operations is near identical to that of the campaign. It's co-op, you're fighting your way through a bunch of enemies in a linear level, and you're completing objectives along the way. But it's more or less a carbon copy of the gameplay from the main story. You know, when you get finished with an eight-hour campaign, and you see that the game has extra content, you want that extra content to feel and play different. You want something fresh and new, not something that blatantly repackages the experience. Suffice to say, we didn't get too much playtime out of this one. If we really liked the campaign enough, we just replay the campaign. There's really no need to give us much of the same. It's a shame too, because there's actually quite a bit of depth to the customization. You can level up your classes to unlock perks and even earn XP for your weapon, which allows you to upgrade it using this tech tree. But since the mode it's attached to is so bland, there's no reason to engage with it. Eternal War is a competitive player versus player mode. Take the side of Loyalist Astartes or the Traitor Marines. Three modes to choose from. Seize Ground, where control points are spread throughout the map and you fight for control over them. The more control points you hold, the more points you accrue over time. Get 200 points and you win. Capture and Control is much of the same, except there's only one control point to fight over, and it changes spots after a period of time. Controlling the point ticks up your score. Move it up to 200 and you win. Finally, Annihilation is your typical team deathmatch. Kill the other team and get points. Get a certain number of points and you win. Like Operations, you have the same six classes, each with different armor ratings and access to certain weapons. Tactical Marines can wield most weapons, have a balanced melee ranged playstyle, and can throw out this sensor to mark enemies. Assault Marines have a jump pack which allows them to get up in the sky, and if positioned right, can smash into the ground and hack the enemy to death. Since all you have is a pistol and melee weapon, you are limited to close combat. Vanguards have access to a grappling hook that can attach to surfaces and enemies. If you manage to hit one, they get stunned, and you can slash them to death. Bulwarks have a shield that can deflect fire, and can set down a banner which refills teammates' armor. But since they're limited to a pistol, they're more of a support class. Snipers have access to long-range, high-power sniper rifles, and can go invisible for a time. Finally, the Heavy has access to heavy weapons, like heavy bolters, and can activate their iron halo to render themselves invulnerable to ranged attacks for a time. Overall, pretty good variety. No matter which class we use, they were pretty fun to play with. Maps are pretty bland, with uninteresting environments, and the layouts of the maps overly simple and much too similar to one another. Eternal War was alright. It's decently fun, but otherwise feels like a pretty generic multiplayer shooter, just with space marines. Nothing much to write home about, and honestly, most other games do it better. Progression for classes and weapons, as well as weapon cosmetics, aren't shared or carried over from operations, giving even less reason to play the operation game mode. In Eternal War, playing certain classes earns XP for them, which unlocks new weapons, and weapon cosmetics are earned by winning enough matches with them. Certain aspects of operations do carry over. Currency and Space Marine cosmetics are shared between both modes. And to its credit, the extensive customization from the first game remains. There is an extensive list of chapters and Chaos Warbands to choose from. You can even switch out the colors of certain sections of armor. And Loyalist Marines even get to swap out their armor, with many options for chest pieces, helmets, pauldrons, and more. Heretic Marines get nothing, though. 
What also isn't carried over from the Operation game mode are the perks and unlocks on the weapon tech trees, because they don't exist in this mode. I get not wanting to make the stats unbalanced between old and new players, but I don't know, rebuild the thing from the ground up or something? It's just so weird that they have these extensive tech trees and perks for the mode that isn't even worth playing, but not for the competitive mode that would actually benefit from having the complexity for players to create builds tailored for their playstyle. So multiplayer is decently fun, but but not fun enough for us to stick around. Again, it's a generic online shooter of which a better experience can most certainly be found elsewhere. Before we wrap this review up, we've got one last thing to talk about. This game has a weird insistence on using its hub over menus. You'd think doing something like switching game modes or loadouts would be as simple as doing so from the menu, but it's not. If you want to switch game modes, you have to physically move to this terminal and activate it to do so. If you want to manage your weapon loadouts, you have to physically move to the armory to do so. It makes no sense. Why have a middleman? Why not just let me pause the game and manage things from a menu? Oh, well, Mac, you can fast travel between locations on the ship. And that's just the funniest thing ever. It has you use the menu to fast travel to the place that lets you do what you want to do instead of just using the menu itself to do what you want to do. What is the point of this? Why are you actively making the process arbitrarily more tedious by making me go through a middleman? Who designed this crap and why were they hired? Fire that man now! It's easy to look at Space Marine's fancy updated graphics and assume it blows its predecessor out of the water. Unfortunately, the story doesn't do much to hold up the gameplay, which the gameplay feels lesser than the original, the operations mode is a joke, and the eternal war mode is a little fun, but only adds maybe a few extra hours of enjoyment. Now, that's not to say that the game's bad, there is still fun to be had here, but it's just kind of lukewarm. Jetavision score for Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 is a 7.5 out of 10. As far as recommendations go, if the game looks interesting to you, we'd say it's worth it on a heavy sale. As for us, however, we won't be returning to the Battle Barge anytime soon. But that's our review on Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a video from the Jetavision. If you want to keep up to date with our latest, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Cheese to Jetavision. Signing out. You all have a good one. Yeah.